Hi guys, so I wanted to record a very quick tutorial on winding a warp, making a warp for your loom. In this case, I'm going to be warping with some mohair. I need to make some mohair warps for a blanket that I'm making. The final blanket is going to be 270 ends wide and it's going to be set at 5 ends per inch. In this particular case, I'm using 5 colors over 270 ends. I'm going to have them be equally sized stripes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that number 270 into 5 and that leaves it with 54 ends and so I'm going to wind a warp that is 3 yards long and 54 ends wide. Okay, so I have a bunch of mohair here that I'm going to be working with. This is a mohair that is 980 yards per pound. It looks like it's approximately like a light fingering weight kind of yarn. Um, but yeah, I've dyed this, hand dyed, into five different colors now so far. So I have my warping board all set up here. This warping board is the large sort of full size warping board. It makes a warp that is about 14 yards long. The width of this is one yard. And so what I have done here is I've created a guide string here that is three yards long because that's the length of the warp that I need. And I'm just going to figure out a path along this warping board that's going to produce a three yard long warp. So I start here at this peg, the far peg. I'm just going to find a path here. To about here. Okay, so this path is going to give me three yards in the end. So using this yarn now, I'm going to start with my loop. I'm going to start with all my knots and things like that at this peg. This peg is going to be the end of the warp. This is going to be the beginning of the warp. And then the most important part of the warp is going to be right here. There's going to be a cross in here. So the yarns are not going to be all laying the same way each time. What they're going to do is they're going to cross over kind of like this. And this cross indicates to me how the yarns are in order, like how, which yarn comes next, which strand comes next as you're working with this warp. So that the, the warp is not all just a whole bunch of strands all bundled together, but that there's actually an order and each one lines up. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to make a little loop at this end of my yarn. And then I'm going to pop that loop over this end peg and then follow the guide string all the way around to the beginning. And once I get to the beginning, so this is three yards long. Once I get to the beginning, I'm going to go around the first peg and then rather than following that same path and going matching where that yarn is, I'm going to go the opposite of where that yarn is. So if this was over the peg before, now I'm going to come under the peg. In this case, this yarn was under the peg, so I'm going to go over the peg. So that's made a cross right here in the middle of my warp. So I'm going to keep going back and forth. So now as I'm winding this warp, I need to know that I've reached 54 ends. At this point in time, it looks like there's what? There's 4, 8, 12 so far. So I still have quite a long way to go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little string here and I'm going to use this as um, a counting string. So this is going to indicate to me how much I've done so far, how many, how many ends I've, I've wound so far. So I'm going to take each bundle of 10 and I can count this by counting the top of this peg. So top of this peg, there's going to be five strands. And I know that underneath the strand, underneath the peg, there's also five strands. So that together is 10. So this little bundle of yarns here, this is going to be 10. And I'm going to use this and just make kind of like a little crochet chain as I go. So that first bundle of 10 is done. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going with that. Okay, so that is 54, 
I'm going to make another loop at this end of the warp and then just loop it around the peg and then we're all done with that one. So now I can remove this counting thread. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to take that out. And since it's a crochet chain, you can just you can just pull it to remove it, but it, because this, this is all mohair, the mohair is sticking to everything. So now the most important thing I need to do is I need to tie off this warp, and I have to tie off and maintain this cross. This is the most important information in my warp. This determines whether or not the entire warp will get tangled or not. Well, one of the re one of the one of the ways it'll get tangled. So I want to maintain this information. So the first thing that I do is I take some scrap yarn and I tie off the cross. That's the first thing. So I go through this peg, through the middle of this peg, and put some yarn through there, and then come back the other side through the other peg. So through here. It's capturing all the threads that I have just now wound and counted. So this can be a relatively loose tie. It's just to maintain this information. And then the next thing I want to do is, I'm going to make a couple of ties here. I'm going to tie off the beginning of the warp. So the beginning of the warp is here at this peg. So this tie indicates the start of the start of your warp. So if you're warping back to front, then this is the this is the point where your rod is going to go and that's where all of the warp starts. If you're warping front to back, this is the part where you cut and then you tie on or you tie through. And then here, this is the end of your warp. Tie that one on too. So those two ties should be pretty tight. You don't want those to go anywhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie probably every half yard or so. I want to tie a choke tie so that the warp doesn't get, uh, that it, the, the threads don't slide around. I want to maintain the position of all of these threads because this is very important in order to keep tension on your, on your warp. You want it to be evenly tensioned. If you don't have an evenly tensioned warp, then you run the risk of having more uh, warp yarns breaking. So you want to make sure that this doesn't move around or go anywhere. So this is a relatively tight tie. You also want to make sure that you don't catch your guide string in as you're making these ties. That happens to me all the time. So tying off another choke tie here, making that pretty tight. Okay, and then I'm going to make a couple more ties. I'm going to make four more ties. So these ties are going to go around the cross again. These are going to be relatively loose ties, but basically if you see around this peg, I'm going to tie around the top of these, around the yarns that are on top of the peg, and then around the yarns that are on the bottom of the peg. So this one can be a relatively loose tie. as well. And then over top and on the bottom of this peg as well. So now this is all tied off. Basically I have the beginning tied off with a tight tie, the end tied off with a tight tie, and then a couple of choke ties around here that keep it together, prevent the warp threads from moving around. And finally I have this cross tied off and through around the entire cross and then on the top and the bottom of this end and then the top and the bottom of this side as well. 
And so now that we're all done here, what we can do is we can pull this warp off of the warping board and then make it into a little crochet chain so that it stays all nice and tidy. So I pull it off starting from the end. You can see the whole thing kind of fluffs up. I make a giant crochet, crochet chain with my hand. And there you have it. So you can hold those two ends together so I know where to start unraveling. So if you just pull this, the whole warp will come undone. So that is good. Yep. And there you have it. So there you have it. We have a warp that is ready to go onto the loom. I just have to make a whole bunch more of these. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you in the next one.